Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie tells the story of Rupasov, a feared assassin in his days, and a young man named Zalika. Rupasov has been forced to use a wheelchair for three years now, because of his disabilities. Meanwhile, having been born with a disability, Zalika has had to use a wheelchair all his life. Zalika now shares a dorm room with Barba, his best friend. Zalika enjoys drawing comics in his spare time, and his work is impressive. The boys reside in a special institution for the disabled. Here, the residents are cared for and monitored, but they have much more space than one might think. The institution's rooms are nothing like those of a hospital. Zalika and Barba are not separated even for a second, they draw comics together and help each other. They face difficulties together and have fun. One day, Barba shows up in the room with a fire extinguisher, and tells him he stole it. Zalika likes it a lot, and the friends go outside to try the object. The fun is interrupted when Rupasov, from the same institution, shows up in the alley. He asks for a light, and Barba kindly gives him his lighter, but tells him that smoking is not allowed here. The man is about to leave, when he suddenly slaps Zalika. Rupasov reveals that he is also a former fireman. He recounts that he has pulled the bodies of small children from burning buildings several times, and instructs them to put the fire extinguisher back where they got it. Afterwards, the man turns and leaves, but Zalika is offended by his behavior. He reaches the attacker, and tries to hit him. Rupasov, however, proves to be much stronger, and soon Zalika finds himself on the ground. After calming down, the protagonist walks away to empty his urinal into the sewer grate. Rupasov quickly realizes that he has gone too far. After apologizing, the man invites the two young men to grab some drinks, where Zalika and Barba seem to be having the time of their lives. The boys are shocked at the number of drinks their new friend orders. They ask him if he is a dealer, but Rupasov laughs and wonders how such a thing could have occurred to him, but he admits that he would need a little help with his work, such as the services of a driver. Barba happily agrees, adding that he also has a car. Soon after, Zola lies down on the sofa, and Rupasov asks what's the matter. Barba replies that his friend has a bad back, but the protagonist is unsympathetic, saying that his back always hurts too, he just needs to feel less sorry for himself. In reality, Rupasov doesn't yet know how serious Zalika's health problems are. Rupasov proposes to them to make a career as assassins, and promises them worldly pleasures, similar to those they experienced at the party today. A few days later, Zalika is in the hospital for surgery. But finally, he refuses, because the operation was paid for by his father, who had abandoned him since birth, after learning that he was born with a malformation. The scene shifts to Rupasov, who receives a mission from his boss. Rupasov waits for his prey in a deserted parking lot. A car approaches and stops near him. Several men get out of the vehicle and approach him. One of them threatens Rupasov with a knife, and plunges it into his leg, but he feels no pain. Rupasov declares that he has not felt anything in his legs for years, because of his disability, eliciting derisive laughter from his targets. One of them then kicks Rupasov. He coughs and pulls a plastic bag out of his pocket. It turns out there is a gun in the plastic, which Rupasov uses to shoot his targets, one after another, until they all die. An ambulance arrives on the scene afterwards. A female doctor named Zita tends to Rupasov's thigh wound, and apparently the two get to know each other. He is in love with her, and wants to take her to the movies later. However, she refuses his invitation, and informs him that she is engaged. He is heartbroken, and even attempts throwing himself off the steps of the pedestrian bridge. However, fate prevents him from letting him do this. Rupasov recovers and continues to live his old life. When he receives his paycheck from his boss, he is told that he must keep his work secret, and not interact with others. During this time, he is often helped by Zalika and Barba. Rupasov meets Zalika a few days later, while in the hospital for rehabilitation of his leg. Rupasov tells him not to help him anymore, and to end their meetings. But Zalika refuses, saying he will continue to work with him. Zalika then refuses to accept the money his father wants to give him, despite his mother's persistent attempts at persuasion. Rupasov waits for Zita in front of the hospital after completing leg training. He wants to give Zita a bouquet of roses, but is discouraged after seeing her with her boyfriend. Rupasov is then hired to assassinate an official. He plans to assassinate the official while having lunch at a restaurant, on the side of the highway. He waits on the other side of the road, while Zalika and Barba secure the situation on opposite sides to facilitate his move. Rupasov accomplishes his mission with the help of a flock of pigeons and a crowd of bystanders, without arousing suspicion about himself. The official collapses while crossing the street, and his body gets covered in blood. His security is looking for the culprit, 
but no one would suspect three crippled men in wheelchairs. The three quickly leave the scene. Later, Rupasov meets Zita on a bus. The woman hands Rupasov an invitation to her wedding. However, Rupasov does not know that the boss is watching his every move. His employer is angry with him for breaking his rules, and beats him until he falls to the ground. After their encounter, the employer offers him only one chance to make it right. This time, Rupasov is assigned to assassinate Zalika and Barba. The next day, Rupasov and his two friends go fishing in a lake. Although they had to cross the prairies to reach their destination, the trio arrives at the lake, and starts fishing. Barba is over the moon when the bait is eaten, and asks for help to pull the line. Instead of helping, Rupasov pushes him into the water. Rupasov then throws Zalika into the river, intending to abandon them there. But he cannot bear the thought of his companions drowning. He finally dives into the water to save them. He says it was just a joke after they all returned to the pier. For the first time, he failed to complete the mission he had been assigned. After returning from the lake, Rupasov invites his friends to a party at his house. He tells them about Zita, and how much he adores her, and the friends want to help him win her over. The next day, three of Rupasov's friends carry him, and lean him against a vehicle, signaling that he can stand, and no longer needs the wheelchair. He waits for Zita to return from the hospital. However, after hours of waiting, it turns out that Zita is not at work. A few days later, he receives orders from his boss to assassinate a drug dealer, and the boss promises him double pay. He accepts the mission on the condition that his current job is his last, and that he not be assigned any more missions. Strangely, the boss accepts the offer. He and his two companions head for the target's house. He then has Zalika and Barba wait in the car, while he performs his work. Before entering the house, the guards search Rupasov, but find nothing alarming, such as a gun or cutting weapons. The guards take him to meet their boss at the residence, thinking that everything is under control. Rupasov begins his acts when he finally comes face to face with the drug dealer. He takes a pistol hidden in the foam cushions of the wheelchair, and starts shooting at the guards inside the residence, but misses his aim. Instead of escaping, the target grabs the gun, and engages in a shootout with Rupasov. The protagonist obviously has more experience with firearms, due to his work as a hitman, although his body is not what it used to be. With his body covered in wounds, and his clothes stained with blood, he still manages to kill everyone and complete his task, before fleeing the area. When he reaches the gate, he hears the police siren sounding in the distance. He attempts unsuccessfully to open the locked gate. Zalika and Barba, who are in the car, look terrified. Zalika takes the initiative to stop the police car, while Barba helps Rupasov leave the house, and then they manage to escape together. Rupasov then goes to his supervisor to get paid for his work. In an unusual way, the boss accompanies him somewhere, and they arrive at a deserted warehouse. Because there is a rope dangling, he realizes that this time there is something strange about his boss's behavior. His supervisor is apparently aware of Rupasov's ruse. He is aware that the two friends he was supposed to kill are still alive. His supervisor is furious and disappointed that he has betrayed his trust. He wraps the reins around Rupasov's neck, and then pushes his wheelchair. To free himself from suffocation, he feverishly tries to loosen the rope around his neck, pushing with his legs on the ground. Then he tries to reach his wheelchair, which is not far away. However, all efforts are futile. Fortunately, moments later, the string of rope is finally loosened. Surviving, he immediately removes the rope from himself. When he returns home, he immediately gathers his comrades to organize revenge against the leader, who has gone too far. A few days pass, and Rupasov is joined by Zalika and Barba at Zita's wedding. He looks elegant in his white coat and carefully tied hair. Rupasov also takes the time to demonstrate his singing skills, which are praised by many people, including Zita, in fact, she bursts into tears. He then kisses Zita, and her husband is filled with envy. After the party, Zita's husband and his friends attack Rupasov, for what he did to his wife. Zalika arrives to help Rupasov. He threatens Zita's husband with a gun, before removing Rupasov from the scene. Over the next three days, Rupasov plans his revenge against his criminal boss. He and Zalika visit his boss's hideout, entering openly while Barba lurks outside. Rupasov declares that he wants to collect wages for the last mission that were not paid by the boss. However, his boss refuses to pay him, and threatens to release his dogs to attack them. Rupasov then draws his gun, and shoots a fire extinguisher on the table next to the crime boss. Because of this, the dogs start running scared. The boss quickly shoots them, until the gun falls to the ground. He then stabs Rupasov with a knife several times. 
Zalika grabs a gun, but does not help his comrade, and allows the boss to kill him. After Rupasov dies, Zalika eliminates the boss. He takes all the money from the safe, and plans to use it to pay for his leg operation. Thus ends the story of the wheelchair killer. It turns out that the entire episode involving Rupasov is a fictional scenario from Zalika's comic strip. He invented a fictional character named Rupasov, who looks like his father, and has a disability like him. Zalika has never met his father in his life. He only keeps a picture of his father, who looks exactly like Rupasov, and was motivated to create a comic book about him and his father. Surprisingly, a large number of people like the comic book, and it was a huge success with publishers. Zalika gives her father a copy of Rupasov's comic book as a memento. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.